Okay, well firstly, could you introduce yourself, uh, your name and the organization that you mm -hmm. represent? My name is Marta Benavides and I am from El Salvador. In El Salvador, I work with a movement that is called 23rd Century, creating future as we live everyday life. And it's a culture of peace program. But also here, I am part of the International Council for Adult Education and the Feminist Task Force for the Global Call Against Poverty or to Action Against Poverty, GCAP. Okay, and you had a meeting recently, I understand, in Mexico City. Uh, tell yes. me a little bit about that meeting. Yes, on purpose in the context of COP16, and in follow-up to COP15, and because we saw what happened in Copenhagen, that no agreements really were reached in terms of the health, the health and the caring of Mother Earth and the caring of the people, uh, we called a meeting of, the, of representatives of people from the communities affected by climate change. So we had people from the, uh, this country, from Mexico, but also from many other countries. And it was just representatives, and especially also with a gender perspective. You know, women were actually very much present. And that was in November 29th in Mexico City, uh, and we reached some agreements. Right. Uh, although these people came from very different situations around the world, did they share many common ideas, many common problems? Yes. We know that this is a historical debt that, there, uh, that is the result of what has been happening to communities because communities and land has been exploited and the people have been oppressed and repressed not to do what they need to do in terms of well-being, you know. And so the people that came there are the ones that have been going through floods, landslides, all kinds of devastations, you know and including the problem of deforestation, desertification, and the problem with food insecurity and lack of food sovereignty. And do they, did they have the impression, did they have the feeling that their politicians from their various countries were listening to their problems and their needs? The reason that we called the meeting is because there is a lot of representatives, for example, here at COP16. Very few of them really, really represent and are the voice of those communities that are the majorities of people that are affected worldwide, you know. And so the call was so that we could get together to figure out how to do south-to-south -south cooperation, how to come to an agreement that there is a need for the climate change and climate justice tribunal, and that the funds that are needed, not to mitigate an adaptation, but to really prevent all these things that are happening and in the meantime also support the adaptation mitigation and all the other supports. So we don't feel that the people are being really listened to and least uh, responded to appropriately in terms of these needs. And are you hopeful that the, the delegates over at the Moon Palace will listen to you this time? Do you think your voice is loud enough uh, for, for them to listen? We think that because they are well fed and because they live so well, uh, they don't really know. They don't have the finger on the wound. We need them to really do it. But for that, it is the us in the communities that are making sure that we look for solutions and that we affect the change from the bottom up. We don't think that the people that are representing us really are our representatives. The problem is that governments, they think that they get there to tell us what to do but they get there to serve and they aren't preparing themselves to serve. So m most of these, these negotiations, they negotiate thinking what is best for them at the moment, not really making the decisions and the choices from the most affected. Okay, so uh, usted quiere pregunta, uh, contestar a la última pregunta en español, si los políticos uh, en Moon Palace uh, les van a escuchar. Necesitamos que escuchen, pero no están escuchando los políticos que están aquí, ¿entiendes? Y poquitos son los gobiernos que entienden que los derechos de la madre tierra son prioritarios para que los derechos de los pueblos económicos, sociales, culturales y ecologistas y ecológicos sean respondidos. Es que hay un déficit, hay un déficit, déficit histórico de responsabilidad seria sobre el cuidado de la madre tierra y el bien vivir de los pueblos del mundo. Muy bien, muchísimas gracias. Muchas gracias a ustedes. Gracias.